Let's talk a little bit about dietary myth number five, which is really two subparts. I, I'll call it 5A and 5B, okay? That the consumption of margarine, which is endorsed by the American Heart Association, is an effective treatment for heart disease. Really? Margarine. Margarine is a partially hydrogenated oil, a trans fat, which I might add has been banned from New York City for the correct reasons because it increases not only one's risk for heart disease, but for cancer as well. Margarine, one molecule removed from rubber. Okay? So every time you spread that stuff on your piece of bread, which you shouldn't be eating anyway, unless it's low carb bread, you're spreading butter on your bread. Oh boy, tasty. You know, it's funny because I got this internet mail thing about margarine being one molecule away from vinyl. But actually, uh, upon researching it, it turns out that it's uh, rubber. Now, I don't, I don't know what kind of plastic or rubber you prefer to eat. I, I, I rather would eat any of them. But neither is, is the correct answer. Now, you can do yourself an experiment. This is fascinating. A patient of mine uh, uh, did this experiment for me. She took a crock of uh, margarine. This is no joke. Took a crock of margarine, put it out in her backyard. Nothing touched it. No insect, no rodent, no squirrel, no chipmunk, no bird, no dog, no cat. But as humans eat it, very tasty, because it's endorsed by the American Heart Association. Woo! Okay? Don't do it. All right? Now, I asked her, do you have a dog? Because I thought maybe a dog. And she goes, yeah, I have a dog. The dog didn't go near it. And then I said to myself, I should have done a controlled experiment. Okay, this was, you know, a very light experiment. But I should have done a controlled experiment. You should have put butter next to the margarine to see if the dogs would eat the butter or other insects or whatever. She goes, I, I wouldn't have to do that because my dogs, if I put the butter up when I'm cooking, they jump up, they take the stick of butter, and they run away and eat it, right? So, uh, so no, margarine, stay away from it. Be extra so careful. Like when you're going out in the store and you want to spread, avoid margarine. Look for the terms, partially hydrogenated oil. It's usually partially hydrogenated cottonseed oil or partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Stay away from the partially hydrogenated oils. And please, do not look at the side packaging label where it has the calories and the amount of grams of carbs, you know, the sugar, the fiber and all that, and it also has the fats listed, saturated fat, mono and polyunsaturated. If you see trans fats in the side packaging label and it says zero grams, don't be fooled. Do not be fooled. The government, in its infinite wisdom, okay, has stated that if it's under 500 milligrams of partially hydrogenated oil per serving, you can put zero grams. Really? Okay, well, in my book, actually literally and metaphorically, because I did write a book on the topic, uh, 500 or, or 400, say, milligrams is um, something. It's not the absence of it. And because we're humans and we like to overconsume, do you honestly think we're going to consume just one serving? No, we're eating two, three, four servings. So now you're up to one, maybe one and a half, two grams of partially hydrogenated oil. And while I'm on the topic of, of bad fats, which is your trans fats, let me also go to uh, 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 dietary myth number 5B, okay, which is all trans fats are bad. All trans fats are bad. False. That may come as a shock to a lot of viewers because we tend to think that all trans fats are bad for us. That's not, that's not the case. There's a trans fat that's found in heavy cream, that's found in uh, uh, butter, all right, that's found in haagen ice cream. I know, I know, I said ice cream. Uh, that's called conjugated linoleic acid, which is a trans fatty acid, which is absolutely safe and actually protects us from cancer. So it has uh, anti-cancer uh, causing properties uh, within it. So those are the five biggest or six biggest dietary myths out there. Pretty shocking, pretty amazing. We're living in a, a, a disease epidemic, pandemic world. We have you know, crazy algorithmic increase in, in, in obesity. Now it's in, in our children. Now our children are getting things that us adults only once saw, such as it used to be called maturity onset diabetes because we used to get, after the age of 50 or 55, when we were assumed to be mature, and well, actually I know a lot of 50, 55 year olds who aren't mature, but it was called maturity onset diabetes. But now we're seeing it in children. So we can't even use that term anymore. Type 2 diabetes in a child. I have a child who's under the age of 10 who's got type 2 diabetes. The fascinating thing about that is it's completely treatable and preventable. There is a cure for type 2 diabetes on this planet right now, ladies and gentlemen. Please believe me. It's the avoidance of carbs. And it's not listening to the American Diabetes Association because they have it wrong. And that is just so heart-wrenching, it's so frustrating. There's a cure. Let's look at diabetes as a disease entity. I guarantee you that most of my listeners know somebody who has type 2 diabetes. 
that they're suffering the diabetic retinopathy, which is the visual problem, or the diabetic nephropathy, which is the kidney problem, which leads to dialysis. Maybe some have had the horrible, you know, the terrible, tragic amputations from gangrene. What would you say if I told you that all of that is preventable? Well, wait, I already have it. You can't prevent it. Well, then it's curable. Type 2 diabetes in my practice has two manifestations, the genetic and the clinical. And I cure the clinical manifestation of type 2 diabetes. I can't eradicate the genes, the genetics. You're already born with that. But I can treat you successfully without medications for type 2 diabetes and curing you, and curing you. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a phenomenal book by Dr. Richard K. Bernstein called The Diabetes Solution, written mainly for type 1 diabetics. But for type 2 diabetics, it's not a solution, it's a cure. So a, a, a big applause goes out for Dr. Bernstein. You know, he's right on in his approach. And by the way, he's one of my idols. And I read his, uh, both copies of his book, uh, 1997 and 2007 edition. So just throw that out there for you. So we do have, you know, precedents. Uh, but forget about the precedents. I'm setting the precedent because I'm seeing and witnessing with my own eyes the success I'm having with type 2 diabetes. Let's take high blood pressure. We're seeing that in children now, too. High blood pressure in children. And that's because it all has to do with the obesity problem. And you see, the problem with obesity, we're seeing it in children. Do you know why we're seeing it in children? Because we don't, and the board behind me here, this is actually something you see in my examination rooms, and any of my patients who actually are watching this will recognize this. Now, what I don't have is I don't have the molecules written out, the molecules written down. But what I do have on the board is that sugar is sugar is sugar. Now, you can also say that glucose is glucose is glucose, but I like to start out, you know, with sugar is sugar is sugar analogy because it, it just makes sense and it's so logical. When I'm giving lectures to physicians, dietitians, or nutritionists, which is always very interesting, okay? As a matter of fact, when I was called to do the lecture at my local hospital, the director of the program, it was a bariatric seminar. Bariatric just deals with weight and weight loss issues. Uh, she gets on the phone and she uh, says, you know, we'd like for you to speak. The surgeon would like you to speak at the bariatric or weight loss uh, conference. And, and my first comment to her was, really? I mean, do you really want me to speak at this? Because I know what they're going to say as far as, you know, whole grains and fruits and all that being important to eat. Um, but the fascinating thing, and this is why it gives me great hope, is that the director of the program had actually read my book, Genocide, How Your Doctor's Dietary Ignorance Will Kill You. Now, that's a heavy title, quite malicious. We'll get back to, back to that in a second. Actually read my book, enjoyed it, and learned from it and he wanted me to give a speech. Now I went on after the, the, the nutritionist who got up there and was reading from the published guidelines. You know, these are guidelines that she put out. You know, these are guidelines that she's following. 